more clearly Look, than that. Let me that, just stop I? you now right there because you're doing something here. Which I am not doing and I will not do throughout these entire broadcasts. You're quoting me out of context, out of order, and I might add, I have participated in all these interviews without a single note in front of me. Well, it is your life, Mr. President. Now, you've always maintained that you knew nothing about any of this until March 21st. Ah. But in February, your personal lawyer came to Washington to start the raising of $219,000 of hush money to be paid to the burglars. Now, do you seriously expect us to believe that you had no knowledge of that? None. I believe the money was for humanitarian purposes, to help disadvantaged people with their defenses. Well, it was being delivered on the tops of phone booths with aliases and at airports by people with gloves on. That's not normally the way lawyers' fees are delivered. Look, I have made statements to this effect before. All that was Haldeman and Ehrlichman's business. I knew nothing. Okay, fine. Fine. You made a conclusion, Mayor. I stated my view. Now let's move on. Let's get no, on with the rest on. of No, hold on. No, hold on. No, I don't no, want to talk. Haldeman and Ehrlichman were the ones really responsible. When you subsequently found out about it, why didn't you call the police and have them arrested? Isn't that just a cover-up of another kind well, of... Maybe I should have done that. Maybe I should have just called the feds into my office and said, hey, there's the two men. Hold them down to the dock, fingerprint them, and then throw them in the can. I'm not made that way. These men, Haldeman, Ehrlichman, I know their families. I knew them since they were just kids. Oh, yeah, but you know, politically, the pressure on me to let them go, that became overwhelming. So I did it. I cut off one arm, then I cut off the other, and I'm not a good butcher. And I have always maintained what they were doing, what we were all doing, was not criminal. Look, when you're in office, you got to do a lot of things sometimes that are not always, in the strictest sense of the law, legal. But you do them because they're in the greater interests of the nation. Right, wait, just so I understand correctly. Are you really saying that in certain situations, the president can decide whether it's in the best interests of the nation, and then do something illegal. I'm saying that when the president does it, that means it's not illegal. I'm sorry. That's what I believe. <laughs> but I realize no one else shares that view. So, in that case, Will you accept, then, to clear the air once and for all that you were part of a cover-up and that you did break the law? What's really funny is the fucking bank job away in Sea Caucus. I'm in the middle of the fucking weed, slaying down. He comes over, he says, what are you doing? I said, I'm resting. Here you're resting. I'm at a fucking beach in a park. I said, I'm resting. I know I'm resting, I'm resting. They pull me in, they start giving me all kinds of questions, you know, this and that. He says, oh, uh, so what are you going to tell us, tough guy? I said, my usual, zero, nothing. I tell you, fuck. He says, no, you're going to tell me something today, tough guy. I said, all right, I'll tell you something. Go fuck your mother. <laughs> You saw the paper, Anthony, my head was up like this. Today. So now I'm coming around, you know, I start to come out of it. Who do I see in front of me? This big prick again. He says, oh, what do you want to tell me now, tough guy? I said, Fing, what are you doing here? I thought I'd tell you to go fuck your mother. <laughs> I thought he was going to shit. <laughs> You mean the way I talk? What? It's just, you know, you, it's, you're just funny. It's, it's funny, you know, the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how? I mean, what's funny about it? Tommy, you no, know, you got it all wrong. He's... Oh, oh, Anthony. He's a big boy. He knows what he said. What'd you say? Right. Funny how? Just... What? 
just, you know, you're, you're funny. <laughs> you mean, so? well, let me understand this, because I, you know, maybe it's me, I'm a little fucked up, maybe. But I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. I make you laugh. I'm here to fucking amuse you. What do you mean funny? Funny how? How am I funny? I'm not just... You know how you tell a story? What? No, no, I don't know. You said it. How do I know? You said I'm funny. How the fuck am I funny? What the fuck is so funny about me? Tell me. Tell me what's funny. Get the fuck out of here, Tommy. <laughs> you motherfucker! I almost had him! I almost had him! Stuttering, yeah, stuttering prick yet? Frankie, was he shaking? I wonder about you sometimes, Henry. You may fold under questioning. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, what the fuck is it with you? He's hanging, I thought I was getting pinched over there. He's hanging on my fucking neck like a vulture, uh, like an ending day. What do you want? This guy's worried about it. He didn't want to come over and get the check. You know, just, the waiter? He could take care of this. Yeah, it's no problem. Tell him to put it on my tab. Of course. That's what I want to talk to you about. You know, if it ain't just this here, it's seven fucking big ones here. Seven fucking G's, you owe me. Seven thousand dollars, I mean, eight peanuts. I don't mean to be out of order, not. <laughs> you don't mean to be out of order? <laughs> Jeez, it's good you don't mean to be out of order, Sonny. You call a virus to me in front of my friends, you know, and like to call me a fucking deadbeat, you know? You know, Sonny, you're a real fucking mutt. You know the money we spend on this fucking... About? Come on, don't be like that. What do you mean, don't be on. like that? <laughs> <laughs> Huh? What the fuck are you looking at? You're a fucking... <laughs> you're a fucking moron. You don't want to bring the chest. Right? You, <laughs> you believe this prick? <laughs> you're supposed to be doing this stuff too, you know? <laughs> you're a funny guy. <laughs> Hey, you want to laugh? This prick last week asked me to christen his kid. <laughs> yeah, I went for 7,000, my charge. <laughs> Steak. Oh boy. Oh, a rare, a bloody steak. If I, if I had a steak, I would fuck it. You don't like me cooking? Oh, don't be such an old bitch. You're drunk. You don't know what you're talking about. How can I possibly like the horse shit you fix us for supper? You're drunk. I, you won't be saying that. Can you kitchen shanty cooks? Oh, there was fried donuts three you're times drunk. a day. You're Country drunk. Country hand bigger you're than your drunk. Food. I'm drunk. I you heard me. <laughs> you drunk. Damn ye. Drunk since I first laid eyes on you. You're fond of me lobster, ain't you? Drunk in a Virginia fence. I seen it. You're fond of me lobster. Say it. Say it. Say it! I don't have to say nothing. Danny! Let Neptune strike you dead, Winslow! Hark! Hark! Triton! Hark! Bellow! Bid our father, the Sea King, rise from the depths full, foul in his fury. Black waves teeming with Salt foam to smother this young mouth when punch him slide. To choke ye, engorging your organs till ye turn blue and bloated with bilge and brine and can scream no more. Only when he, crowned in cockle shells with slithering, tasteful tail and 
steaming beer take up his fell befinged arm. His coral time trident screeches fancy like in the tempest and plunges right through your gullet, bursting ye a bulging bladder no more. But a blasted bloody fill now a nothing for the Orphees and the souls of dead sailors to pick and claw and feed upon only to be lapped up and swallowed by the infinite waters of the dread Emperor himself. Forgotten to any man, to any time, forgotten to any god or devil, Forgotten even to the sea, for any stuff or part of Winslow, even any scantling of your soul is Winslow no more, but is now itself the sea. All right, have it your way. I like to go. Hey kids, how you boys doing? Hey, keep chilling. You know who we are? We're associates of your business partner, Marcellus Wallace. You do remember your business partner, don't you? Now let me take a while, kids. You're Brett, right? Yeah. I thought so. You remember your business partner, Marcellus Wallace, don't you, Brett? Yeah, I remember. Good. Looks like me and Vincent caught you boys at breakfast. Sorry about that. What you have? Hamburgers. Hamburgers! The cornerstone of any nutritious breakfast. What kind of hamburger? Che cheeseburgers. No, 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 no. Where'd you get them? McDonald's, Wendy's, Jack in the Box, where? Big Kahuna Burger. Big Kahuna Burger. That's that Hawaiian burger joint. I hear they got some tasty burgers. I ain't never had one myself. How are they? Good. You mind if I try one of yours? This is yours here, right? Hmm. This is a tasty burger. Vincent, you ever had a big kahuna burger? One bite? They're real tasty. Ain't hungry. Well, if you like burgers, give them a try sometime. Me? I can't usually get them because my girlfriend's a vegetarian, which pretty much makes me a vegetarian. I do love the taste of a good burger. Mmm. You know what they call a quarter pound of cheese and things. Tell them, Vincent. Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. You know why they call it that? Because of the metric system. Check out the big brain on bread. You're a smart motherfucker, that's right. The metric system. Send it. Sprite. Sprite, good. You mind if I have some of your tasty beverage to wash? Go right ahead. I need this pie. You, lock the seagull. Know why we're here? Won't you tell me, man, since you really got the shit here? It's over here. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. You were saying? It's in the cupboard. No, no, the one by your knees. Yeah. 
Vincent. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Look. I'm sorry. Uh, I I didn't get your name. I got yours. Uh, Vincent. Right? But but I, I never got your name. My name's Pitt. And your ass ain't talking your way out of it, shit. I just want you to know. I just want you to know how sorry we are that, that things got so fucked up with us and, and Mr. Wallace. It, 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 we, we got into this thing with the best intentions, really. I never... Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? I didn't mean to do that. Please, continue. You were saying something about best intentions? What's the matter? Oh, you were finished? Oh, well, allow me to retort. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What? What country you from? What? What? What ain't no country I ever heard of. They speak English in what? What? English, motherfucker! Do you speak it? Yes! Then you know what I'm saying. Yes! Describe what Marcellus Wallace looks like. What? Say what again. Say what again. I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time. He's black. Go on. He's bald. Does he look like a bitch? What? Does he look like a a bitch! Oh! Then why you try to fuck him like a bitch, Brett? <laughs> yes, you did! Yes, you did, Brett! You tried to pay me. My son Wallace don't like to be fucked by anybody except Mrs. Wallace. You read the Bible, Brett? Yes! Well, there's this passage I've got in the mind. So I Ezekiel 25, 17. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness. For he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brother. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon you. Is he a friend of yours? Hmm? Oh, this is Mark. Better tell him to shut the fuck up. He's getting on my nerves. Marvin. Marvin. Marvin! I'd knock that shit off if I was you. Oh, you you tell somebody was in the bathroom? Slip your mind? Did you forget that someone was in there with a the goddamn hand cannon? You see the size of that gun he fired at us? It was bigger than him. We should be fucking dead. He was lucky. No, no, no. no. That's a good one. This was divine intervention. You know what the bad is eventually? I think so. That means that God came down from heaven and stopped the bullets? That's right. That's exactly what it means. God came down from heaven and stopped these motherfucking bullets. I think it's time for us to leave, Jules. Don't do that. Don't fucking blow this shit up. What just happened here was a fucking miracle. Chill, Jules. This shit happens. Wrong. Wrong. This shit doesn't just happen. Do you want to continue this theological discussion in the car or in the jailhouse with the cops? We should be fucking dead, my friend. What happened here was a miracle, and I want you to fucking acknowledge it.
All right, it was a miracle. Can we go now? things were. But I know the truth. There's no going back. You've changed things. Forever. Then why do you want to kill me? <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? Go back to ripping off mob dealers? No, no. No. No, you. You complete me. You're garbage. Who kills for money? Don't talk like one of them. You're not even if you'd like to be. To them, you're just a freak. Like me. They need you right now. But when they don't, they'll cast you out. Like a leper. You see, their morals, their code, it's a bad joke. You've dropped at the first sign of trouble. They're only as good as the world allows them to be. I'll show you. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. Where's Dent? You have all these rules, and you think they'll save you. It's in control. I have one rule. Oh, then that's the rule you'll have to to know the truth. Which is? The only sensible way to live in this world is without rules. And tonight, you're gonna break your one rule. I'm considering it. No, there's only minutes left. You're gonna have to play my little game if you want to save one of them. Yeah. You know, for a while there, I thought you really were a dent. The way you threw yourself after her. <laughs> Look at you go! Does Harvey know about you and his little bunny? Where are they? Killing is making a choice. Where are they? He was between one life or the other. Your friend, the district attorney, or his blushing bride to be. <laughs> Nothing to threaten me with. Nothing to do with all of your strength. Don't worry. I'm gonna tell you where they are. Both of them. And that's the point. You'll have to choose. He's at 250 52nd Street, and she's uh, on Avenue X at Cicero. <laughs> Beer 